We bring in Dmitry Alperovich, founder of the Silverado Policy Accelerator, former advisor to the Pentagon. Uh, Dmitry, let's start with the propaganda. You've watched a lot of Vladimir Putin's speeches. We used to say you had to tr take Donald Trump perhaps seriously, but not literally. Does that apply to Vladimir Putin, or does Putin actually believe all this stuff he's saying? Oh, no, I think he believes it, and we do have to take him literally. And look, he's now completely isolated. He alone made this decision to invade. The war is now in its third week, over a third week now, actually. And he thought that he could take Kiev, of course, in three days. Uh, he thought that the people were giving him good advice. He now knows that that's not the case. The economy is getting strangled. So he doesn't know who he can trust. Typically, in a case like that, when things are not going well, you would then sort of try to find a way out, a way to save face, withdraw, regroup, rearm, and the like. Vladimir Putin's not doing that, and that speech certainly indicates that. How much does his KGB training play into that? Look, his back is to the wall, and he knows that he's all in. And unless he gets major concessions from Ukraine, concessions like NATO, concessions on Crimea and Donbass, there's just no way he can pull back and say face, he will be weakened domestically. He knows that. So he has to keep going until he either gets what he wants or he loses power. Boy, is that scary. Uh, New York Times op-ed, Putin's endgame. Putin's final cards are very far from played. I've seen a certain amount of tr uh, triumphalism in a lot of the commentary referring to Ukraine's win, that Putin can't possibly win, that he is probably looking for an off-ramp. That's Brett Stevens. Uh, Seems as though if he's saying there's more cards to be played, what are those? Well, he's bringing reinforcements right now to support his troops. Uh, we've, we've seen tanks flowing in, additional tanks into, into the conflict. He's using his air force a lot more. He's pummeling cities to the ground. He's starving the cities as we've talked uh, earlier this week. So he is trying to get a military win here, mm -hmm. even though he won't be able to take the whole country. Yeah, certainly it seems as though he's trying to pinch off that eastern part of the country, crush the Ukrainians that are there, uh, and, then, and then he does have something to win. A larger sense of who Vladimir Putin is and has become, uh, almost becoming a Stalin-esque figure, right? He came in as sort of this uh, Western-friendly businessman who was going to bring, former mayor of Moscow, a little bit charismatic, uh, and now all of a sudden he's taken on so many of these Stalin-like, tactics and policies? Well, you know, he's always been an authoritarian. Let's not kid ourselves. He was never a Democrat in, in the small d sense of the word. The first thing he, he did when he came to power 22 years ago is he destroyed independent media. He's cracked down on dissent. So he's always done that. But now he's a totalitarian. Now he is like Stalin. He's arresting people for even holding blank placards on the street for fear of any dissent. And of course, he's assassinating opponents, including with radiological and chemical weapons. That's who he is. He is indeed becoming a lot like Stalin, not quite on the same scale of genocide yet, but getting there. Yeah, Stalin always said, you know, a million deaths is a statistic, one is a tragedy. Uh, you think about Putin over the years, you make a great point. He has changed a lot uh, over 22 years. Images from 2004, 2008, 2017, and now. Uh, he has become more totalitarian, he has become more brutal. Uh, are we right to think he is becoming a little less mentally stable and perhaps a little bit more irrational and impulsive, which is fine. It's happened to a lot of people as they get older. Uh, perhaps not so fine when you've got your hand on the nuclear trigger. Yeah, I'm not quite sure that he is irrational. He certainly miscalculates and he's isolated, so he can't necessarily make the best decisions. But he's always been paranoid. In part, that's the KGB education. Not only was he a KGB spy, but he was actually, he started his career in the counterintelligence division of the KGB, the, the most level of paranoia you can possibly get there. You're looking at everyone as if they're a spy and a traitor. That's just who he is. And this was his sound by talking about the invasion of Ukraine as it related to what you said about Donbass, the eastern part of Ukraine that he claims he is liberating. Take a listen. Сида является основной, главной причиной, побудительным мотивом и целью военной операции, которую мы начали в на Донбассе и на Украине. We always have to remember that what the Russian people are seeing is a mirror image of what we see, right? They they see 
we see Russia as the aggressor, Russia is played as the defender in the Russian media, uh, Nazi flags flying in Ukraine that they've uh, photoshopped and the like. How much of Russia really believes what they are hearing and seeing? And this big speech, he gets tens of thousands of people to a stadium. Do they really support him? So, of course, it's hard to tell an authoritarian or totalitarian regime like this. But based on everything that we see, at least a majority, at least 50 percent do, perhaps as many as 70 percent based on some of the state poll, but those are suspect. But in terms of these rallies, I mean, th this really goes back to the Soviet era. What we now know from the journalists that attended these rallies is that they bust people in. A lot of them are state workers, so they can't necessarily refuse and say no. They didn't necessarily want to be there in the cold listening to all these speeches all day long. They didn't even know what this was supposed to be about. This is exactly what the Soviets did, brought people in for the parades, for the demonstrations, for the funerals of major officials. They're going back to that playbook. Yeah, Francis Rooney, the former ambassador, former congressman, one of the great sort of men of foreign policy uh, of this generation, a la James Baker of the last, said that uh, if uh, Putin wants a Cold War, we should give him one. Um, I'm thinking about what Vladimir Putin's next move is in terms of this. What would indicate to you that we should start getting really scared about trying to pick a fight with NATO versus, hey, maybe we can find a way out of this? Yeah, I, I don't I don't see him picking a fight with NATO. Look, he's bogged down in Ukraine. He can barely handle that country. There's so, he, so, he's not su so he's not suicidal or crazy. Not, not at just, all. Okay. In fact, you see him sitting at these long tables. The reason he's doing that is he's afraid of COVID, uh, so afraid that uh, he can't even get within 30 feet of anyone. So he absolutely cares about living. He does not want to die. Boy, uh, Dimitri, we asked you this last night, and I'm going to ask it again just because it's fascinating to me. Uh, how do we make sure Vladimir Putin doesn't do this again? If it's the only way he stays in power is by being the protector of the Russian people and... He likes to invade things to show how powerful he is. How does he not do this again in three or four years? Well, he can't come out with a win here. So we can't get a ceasefire uh, out of this deal where all the sanctions, all the penalties go away. Because guess what? Then he's going to realize that there's no cost to pay. And he will do it again, perhaps against Georgia, perhaps against another republic that he wants to try to bring back into Russia's sphere of influence. So he can't get away with it. Yeah, and you, you hear Antony Blinken, the Secretary of State, saying the, one, the, the main priority of the United States is to bring this to a quick end, not to make sure Vladimir Putin can't do this again. Uh, for those uh, on Twitter, uh, follow Dmitry Alperovich on Twitter uh, over the weekend for the best analysis. You've been incredible on this, uh, and we really appreciate the time. Thanks for watching. Click the red subscribe button below so you can get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.